Hold on to your sombreros, amigos, because the best of the West is headed back to Mexico. We've been fortunate to be a part of so many successful hunts south of the border. From desert bighorn sheep, coos deer, and mule deer, it's always an honor to be a part of someone's hunt of a lifetime. We've chased rams all the way from Tiburon Island to the Chihuahuan Desert. Last year, we followed Blaine Milburn on his first desert sheep hunt with the team from La Palmosa. Once in position on a great ram, Blaine had to wait it out for a clear shot. Thanks to restoration efforts being made to reintroduce desert bighorns into their native lands, sheep numbers continue to increase throughout Mexico. Coos deer hunting continues to grow in popularity each year as more and more hunters test their skills against these incredible animals. Elusive and hard to spot, coos deer hunting requires patience and precision shooting. Coos deer can be found in southern Arizona and New Mexico, but Mexico holds a large number of coos deer and is most likely your best bet at finding a big one. Three years ago, friend of the show James Kadenich took a nice coos buck from 400 yards away, and thanks to the local vaqueros, had his buck packed back to camp in style. When it comes to hunting in Mexico, mule deer have long been the most sought-after species there is. Many a gringo has crossed the border in hopes of bringing back a Sonoran giant. With thick vegetation and few vantage points, the pursuit of big muleys can be a frustrating endeavor. Several years ago, the best of the West followed Ray Bory on his first desert mule deer hunt. On the last day, Ray managed to spot a bedded buck in thick cover. With only a split second to decide, Ray liked what he saw and put his hands on his first desert mule deer. Nice buck. These are a great bunch of guides. Time of my life. On this episode of The Best of the West, we're privileged to be hunting big desert muleys with Kerry and Leo Goss in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. So down here in Sonora, you have a few different options on what we found to be the better ways to hunt, uh, mule deer and coos deer are both uh, wary species and, and you know you got to bring your A game to, to hunt them and we're, we're trying to hunt the upper top level animals and so basically you may be a lot of days into finding one trophy and then a, a lot more days hunting that particular animal trying to uh, hunt just one animal that's a big one and get him on the ground. The shooting windows down here in Sonora are very tight. We're, we're right here down here in the Sonora Desert. There's a, there's a lot of vegetation, so the shooting windows are small. We found that luckily on our ranch, we have terrain. So getting up on terrain and glassing, trying to relocate that trophy animal we're looking for, having the ability to shoot some distance successfully with the best of the West rifle and the Huskamaw system has been a great benefit to us. You can find four and five and 600 yard shots down here are gonna be from some elevation are going to be keys to hunter success. If you can shoot that, that amount of distance comfortably, uh, you will increase your odds of harvesting these animals in the desert. My wife and I, we've used Best of the West rifles and Huskama scopes for many years. We love the Huskama scopes because they offer a simple infield shooting solution that you can quickly come with a shooting solution with your wind and your range. We've had great success with them. They're simple, they're easy to use. We've used them on many sheep hunts, horseback hunts in the west in Wyoming, and they've, they've stood up to the uh, rigors of all that horseback hunting, sheep hunting in big mountains, and we've never had an issue with them. And so, you know, we've, we've uh, just come to use solely Huskama scopes. And with that, we've come to know the uh, Best of the West crew, and earlier this year they filmed my wife and I carry on a uh, doll sheep hunt in the Yukon. We talked about uh, how great Mexico was and Sonora mule deer hunting are obviously a great trophy, as well as coos deer and desert bighorn down here. The best of the West team come down to uh, film this mule deer hunt in Sonora on our ranch and uh, we think we have a, uh, an exciting episode ahead. One thing that's really nice about mule deer hunting in the Sonora Desert, um, 
especially when you come down in December or January is, you know, where I live up north in Wyoming, it's a lot colder and freezing. And so when you come down here, it's actually kind of a relief and just a little break from the snow. And you come down and enjoy the beautiful scenery and the warm weather. The Sonora Desert, to me, over all the years of hunting, has been so special. My husband Leo and I come down and we just embrace being together and going out in the outdoors and hunting and getting a chance to even see mule deer or coos deer and sometimes we've even seen sheep out in the mountains which is awesome to see in the desert and it's just been so many special memories like I think about all the years the people that have been with us that helped us um, the first thing that I always like to do is even though we travel make sure your gun is lined up and on site so that's what we did the first day we went out and we set up in the road kind of on a dirt road and put a target out around 200 yards because I knew when I left Wyoming I sighted it in right around 200 yards so I felt comfortable there but the elevation Wyoming where we were at was right around 4,000 feet and where we're at now is about sea level we did have to lower it by just a couple of clicks and it was totally bullseye and I felt really confident after that. So then the next day we decided we were going to get ready to go hunting. So from there we went hunting um, and the way we hunt is, you know, you drive around we do a lot of spot and stock and the vegetation here is so tall and so dense. I try to explain to people that it's like hunting in the jungle but with cactus instead of the actual trees so everything you touch could be really pokey so you have to be really careful where you walk how you maneuver around or like as you can see right next to me this is very sharp so you don't want to get too close to it <laughs> my never-ending thirst for big mule deer brought me here uh, they're my favorite animal to hunt we come down to sonora and looked at a three different ranches and and uh, we decided on ranch los mochos which is in the uh, northern part of uh, Sonora. It, uh, this ranch has a lot of history. Jack O'Connor hunted his desert bighorn sheep here. You could read uh, in his writings and see that his desert sheep did come from the ranch. It's been a great 16 years, I guess it would be now. On the ranch, we have desert bighorns. We have uh, trophy coos deer and we have trophy mule deer. When we purchased the ranch, it was uh, not well taken care of and so we've enacted a lot of conservation, done water improvements, built many reservoirs for water enhancement and uh, done strict predator control. Now we have some good populations of all three species here on the ranch which is uh, a rare thing in Sonora. Lots of ranches have, some have coos, some have mule deer, some have desert bighorn. It's hard to find a ranch that has a combination of all three. Hunting Sonora is difficult. It's thick vegetation. The deer travel a lot. You uh, need to have a lot of patience and come with the best optics that you can afford and expect to uh, spend a lot of time glassing. And many people don't have the uh, patience to sit and glass for hours on end, days on end, and weeks on end. And, and that is absolutely what it takes to uh, locate and uh, harvest these great animals that live in the Sonora Desert. We've let lots of uh, young four-year-old deer, maybe even last year let a five-year-old deer that was big. We've let them walk. Occasionally we do relocate those deer the next year and harvest them. That's when we uh, really feel like we've had some great success, but I feel super successful letting those deer live to older age class and spread their genetics in the whole region here. When you find a truly special deer, like it's worth leaving them to get to that upper age class, spread their genetics and enhance the, the herd that we all share here with our neighbors. I think that Carrie and I have, have harvested throughout the years 11 or more 200 inch deer and uh, another approximately 10 that would be mid to high 190s didn't quite knock out the 200 inch mark and those are honest uh, official type scores. Age is super important, like a lot of those big deer, they're all six to nine years old. The theme is, is like you got to have some management, you got to have some conservation, and you got to let these deer live and, and get to some age on where they can have that beauty that you're looking for. And I mean, Sonora deer are very beautiful when they, when they reach full maturity. 
When the best of the West returns, Carrie Goss takes aim at the buck she's been looking for. So the first day was great. Um, we went and we just spot and stalked and just saw a few does, but we didn't really see anything um, big. So you go out in the morning, and then you come back usually for lunch, have a little break, and then you go back out in the evening until dark. So there was days of going with Leo and we would do the same thing, or sometimes I would just go with Javier, which I've hunted with Javier off and on for many years. Great person, great guide, um, just great to be around. So I felt very comfortable whatever he decided to take me to or if we walked or hiked up a hill or if we drove around and hopefully saw something, then that would be great too. But if not, we were gonna have fun. So every day, whether I went with my husband Leo that I love to hunt with um, or whether I went with Javier, we just had a wonderful day and every day was sunny except for one day it rained, which is very unusual in Mexico, but it does happen. And the day that it rained, the next day was, the smells were incredible in Mexico. The ground, the way it smells, and just the trees and the bushes, and it's just a wonderful place to be when you're wanting to go mule deer hunting in the Sonora Desert. One thing I was really thankful of is when I built my apparel as Zyre, and hunting it with, in Canada, the terrain, to Wyoming, to Colorado, to Utah, and always hunting in Sonora, it really performs, you know. My pants, which I'm so thankful of, the stickers and the debris that stick on a lot of materials do not stick on mine, and I've been very grateful for that because when you sit down, you can brush it off and it doesn't go through the pants, so. Um, Azire really has succeeded my expectations in all different types of trains and different type of hunting. So I'm very blessed for that. So after days of looking and not seeing quite what I wanted to see that was big enough, um, it was probably about the fifth day and it was in the afternoon and Javier and I went out and we were out looking and hiking around and we where we came upon, we saw some movement and watched it and from out from the cactus, we could tell that it was a big body and some horns, but it disappeared. So we kind of hiked up to a little bit of an advantage point, like on a small hill, and we decided, let's just be real quiet and still and lay down and just get set up. We know it's in this area. We knew which area we were gonna look for and hopefully that, it would come out again and show itself and then get a good look at see what it was and see what kind of buck. And so we waited there, seemed like forever, but I know it was probably only about maybe 45 minutes and it was starting to get dark and I was starting to get cold. So I put on my sweater, so I was laying there and thought, okay, I'm just gonna sit here and wait out. And then all of a sudden Javier kind of pointed and I saw the movement and so I literally just put my rifle in that direction and kind of was just looking through my scope, just getting ready. I immediately saw the movement, I saw the horns come out and when he was coming towards me and I could see how big and wide he was, immediately I knew this was a great buck. So I got set up and I just started again, taking deep breaths, keeping myself real calm and steady and he wasn't quite in the position where I felt like I could shoot him, so I just patiently waited, and I felt like he was gonna turn, and that patience paid off. He turned, and I was ready, and I took a shot. The Best of the West is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Hunt and Fool, the Best of the West shooting systems, Defiance Custom Actions, the Wild Sheep Foundation, Huskama Optics and LongRangeStore.com.
So as Javier and I were waiting, he pointed. And as he pointed, I got into my rifle and was looking at my scope. And I could see the movement. And then all of a sudden, out from behind the polyverde or bush or whatever cactus he was, I saw the horns. And when I saw how wide in my scope and how big he looked from there, I knew immediately this was a buck I was going to try to shoot for. So I literally got ready and I just waited and I got myself calm and I started taking deep breaths and I started just keeping myself positioned so that I could make a good steady one shot. I hit him and I knew I hit him really good and hard and he ran off and so I immediately jacked in another one and I moved my rifle to follow him really close and he went right behind um, a cactus that I didn't have a shot but I could see his horns and I just watched him and literally in seconds I could see his body go down and his horns went down and I knew I got him but we decided to wait just a few more minutes and be really still and quiet and then no movement so we decided let's sneak down there and go see because I felt like I really got a big buck and when I went down there I felt like he grew. When I walked up close to him, I just could not believe the mass that mule deer had. And Javier and I were so excited. It was just amazing to harvest such a beautiful Sonora big buck. It's what I feel anybody that loves to mule deer hunt dreams of. So I just feel so blessed to have been able to do that. You can't take anything away from this buck. He's bred for that many yeah. years. So strong, eh? Very strong. Put a jet, perfect jet there. Perfect one shot. Perfect one shot. Heavy, big, dark horn, Sonora mule deer buck. The weather's, I'm in a grid fleece and a t shirt. That's awesome. What a day. <laughs> wow. I'm so grateful that Leo and I get this opportunity to come down and hunt down here in Sonora to go mule deer hunting and coos deer hunting. Um, it's been such a wonderful, wonderful trip. And then to harvest the class of a heavy over six inch base mule deer that's heavy all the way up, dark horned, wide, is just absolutely like icing on the cake. And, all the wonderful people that are here with me, I, I'm just so grateful for us and very grateful for the Best of the West rifle that always performs and exceeds my expectations. So thank you for that. I'm passionate about mule deer. We try to get some age on them down here. What I found in the 16 years we've had the ranch is that these deer get big with some age. I mean, we, we've killed many over 200 and lots of those 200 inch deer are eight and nine years old. I'll give you a little heads up here. Like my estimate is I, I think that Kerry's deer is nine years old. His uh, teeth were completely wore down. He's got a great big old head on him. I'm talking his skull, not his horns. He's got 43 inches of mass, maybe something like 33 inches of width. He's just an old desert burrow. This region that we hunt, our ranch and all the neighbors around is completely uh, free range deer. Us, as well as our neighbors, have some great Sonora free-range deer, which to me are the real deal. People get are, are so much into social media, they see the, the big deer that are being harvested in Sonora, but you know, I will speak that I'll, the majority of those, or lots of them, let's say, are uh, high-fence deer. So if you're booking a hunt, know, and if you want a high-fence hunt, that's great. But just know what you're getting yourself into. Don't come down here and and find yourself in, in a situation that surprises you. So there is both kinds of hunts down here. I'm for all the hunters enjoying whatever type of hunting they want to do. I uh, encourage them to just be educated on what type of hunt they're getting. Sonora is becoming more and more popular. We started coming down in 06 and there was lots less hunters, but in the last uh, maybe six, eight years, it's become more and more popular. Sonora is a wonderful place and there's lots of uh, great ranches to hunt with lots of great outfitters. The people in Sonora are generally great people that have your best interests at heart. Everybody comes down here thinking that they're going to you know, buck a hunt and kill a 200 inch mule deer. This is a great place to kill a 200 inch deer. But 
they're, they're not on every hilltop and many people go home disappointed so like that may be a bit oversold so I would say proceed with caution on what your expectations are when you come here. For sure you're going to find a beautiful ranch setting with great weather, great people, great food and trophy deer so just be sure that you know what your expectations are when you uh, come to Sonora. Thanks for watching this episode of The Best of the West. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest long-range hunting adventures.